Hi. Hey, I'm making you host. Okay. Are you home yet? No, I'm in Belchtown, so I'm going to keep driving and mute my uh, microphone and stuff. Okay. And hopefully this will stay connected, but um, you can uh, let everyone in the meeting and I'll join you as soon as I get home. Okay. Okay. Great. I'm missing a folder. Hello. Hello. I'm looking for my folder. First, I will let Gina in. Yellow manila folder. A white folder, actually. Yeah. Still, it looks like I have a halo. Just to say that you don't. Uh, the men, my husband, my boys, you're right. I, you're right. <laughs> Good. I know where. Okay. Hello. Hello. Looking for my folder. It's right next to me. And Alan is uh, driving home. He got stuck behind a plow truck. So he'll be late, but he did pull over and start the meeting. So we're here. And somebody else has just joined. Yeah, it's pretty awful. I just got in myself. Yeah. I'm supposed to drive to Boston tonight. So oh, <laughs> I don't know if I do that. Yeah. All right. So we're waiting for a quorum. Hello, Gina. Does everyone know Gina? Yes. You've never been an official member, but you've come to a lot of our things. Right. I can I come when I can't, but you're right. I'm not an official member. Okay. So we have a quorum, but let's wait a couple more minutes. There's Julian. Bennett, will you take minutes? Yep. Thank you. There he is. And um, so Britt and Shoshana are waiting for, but we won't wait too long. For Julian and for um, Sarah, I mentioned that Alan's driving home from the um, tree wardens gathering and uh, he got stuck behind a plow, so he's a little late, but he'll be here as soon as he can. And uh, Julian, do you have the agenda? I have it just in the regular form that you send, but it comes up on my computer pretty weird. It comes up in like the text edit things, so it won't present like the normal agenda if I presented it. Ellen or Sarah, can you uh, 
share the agenda? You're muted, Ellen. Can I, sorry, can I ask that we don't do that all the time? Because then we can't see each other. Okay. Well, you can you can shrink it down and, but all right. Um, let me call it up myself. There we go. All right, so announcements and public comments. Gina, do you have any public comments? No? Okay. And uh, Ben, make sure you get uh, Gina's last name too. Already there, buddy. All right, good. All right, so let's do hours while we're waiting for people to come. Uh, Bennett? Um, to uh, say three, say four. Okay. Ellen? I'm trying to remember, did we have um, any plantings in November or December? December. November we did. We had the... Um... Nothing in, in... Okay. So probably just two. Okay. Julian? Uh, probably six. Okay. Sarah? Two. Two. And I probably am up to 10. And Gina will count your hours too, so just for being here. Okay. All right. Um, so approval of the December minutes and approval of the um, minutes that Bennett took from the, uh, the site visit. I approve the minutes from our last meeting. Second. We don't need seconds, but uh, right. yeah. Um, let me try to find it just so I can see. Oh, where'd it go? I had it, I just lost it. Um, there it is. Okay. I will um, mount it on the official. Oh, I did already. Okay. Yeah. So good. All right. So it's a, do we approve? Which one are we approving first? Uh, Ellen made the motion to do the December minutes first, I think. Lost. I have too many screens open. Now I can't find the... Uh, hold on. Where are you guys? Oh, there you are. Ah, okay. Um, so which one first? I'm sorry. December minutes. Okay. Is that approved? Any corrections or... Thumbs up, yeah. Okay. Approved. And the minutes from the site visit, January 5th. I'm going to abstain. I wasn't there. Okay. Me too. Okay. We did have a quorum. Um, all right. Um, then that's that. And what's next on the agenda? Now I have to find it again. That's why I like someone else sharing it. <laughs> Oh, it's right in front of me. Okay. Uh, committee reports, chair's report. And we'll just go through the stuff. We'll wait on the site visit uh, discussion until Alan gets there. Okay. So yeah, there's the Mass Tree Warrens and Forest Association statewide conference today. I would have liked to have gone, but I couldn't. Um, and also I found out about it too late to let you guys know about it. I spoke uh, again, or I got emails, I uh, traded emails with Mindy Dom about the money she calls earmarks, which she can just grab some money from the state budget to uh, fund us for things. And she said, we can use that money for like hiring people to do the tree inventory, but it's not considered permanent money. It's just that year, if there's extra money, they can earmark it. So we talked about Alan about that, but um, she needs to hear by, well, pretty soon by the end of this month, if we want to do that. And then it's voted on and April at the uh, state house. And she has extra money this year because the state has like some sort of budget deficit. Yeah, she usually has some money available for your okay. Got it. And then um, the woman, Anna Carter from uh, Stanley Street, there's a housing development there. She wants to plant some memorial trees and wants us to provide the trees. Uh, thought she was going to come to the meeting. Maybe she will. Um, she showed up at the site visit, but we 
we're, we couldn't really talk about that then. Um, so I'll wait till she comes. Uh, we did a planting there some years ago and uh, the whole neighborhood came out and helped. It was mostly on private property, most of, but a lot in the setback, so it was okay. And um, yeah, they all came out and helped. They brought us re good refreshments. It was a lovely planting day. And then the other thing is uh, this woman, Pat from Applewood, um, wants us to replace trees. Alan knows about this. They're cutting down ash trees along um, the drive through Applewood. And that's, I'm not sure if that's public or private. We'll just have to hear from Alan about that. So hopefully he'll be here for those. Um, the site visit we did. Um, and the climate for it. Um, Julian, you sent the email to me and Bennett to put in the newsletter that thing about uh, yes. the yep. climate, climate Forestry Committee's report. And I think uh, it'd be good if we wrote a letter to the editor based on that. Yeah, I, I would I would agree. I, I think it was a good thing to flag down. I also would like to thank Bennett for writing the other letter to the editor that I just saw in the Gazette today. Oh. That was written a while ago, right? Yeah, but it was just published, I think, today or yesterday. Oh. Oh, this is a thank you letter. Yep. Okay, I hadn't seen that. Okay, good. Um, Julian, do you want to write the... Uh, sure, I'd be open to it. Absolutely. We could work on it together sometime or whatever. Well, I'm, I'm going to be gone for two weeks, so... Okay. Yeah. Um, right. you know, it's in the Gazette. You can just read the article and yep. talk about how our committee supports protecting forests, right? few paragraphs type thing. What's that? A few paragraphs, sort of like what Ben did. Yeah, yeah, something short, a letter to the editor. I think Sounds shorter good. ones are read more often. Yeah, I would tend to agree. Sounds good. Yeah, good. And um, I, we're not going to have time to discuss it as a committee and do it for the whole committee. So just say Julian Hines, you know, vice chair of the Shade Tree Committee. Good. All right, and that's all I have for the chair's report. Uh, Julian, do you have something? Uh, no, I sort of linked all I had to say in to that um, because we covered the letter, the idea of writing the letter and the uh, editorial. Um, so I think that is all I was going to bring up. Okay, Henry, for the uh, for the minutes, the what's the name of the organization um, that's probably asking us to plant trees uh, on Stanley Street? Yeah, let me see if I can find the email um, real quick. I think it might be the Misty Meadows Homeowners. Misty system. Meadows, that's it. Yep. Misty Meadows Home Homeowners Association. Misty Meadows Neighborhood Association. Okay. Great, thank you. And let me see if I can find the other one too. Oops. Uh, Several dying ash trees. Okay. okay. I don't see more details. Yeah, okay. I didn't find more information. Are you good, Bennett? Good. Yeah. I'm great. Yep. Okay, Sarah and Rain, do you have a report, either of you? Uh, yep, the budget is $9,355.29, which reflects no change um, going all the way back to September 23rd, or September 23, 2023, um, which is the last time we bought trees. We do have actual a $48 encumbrance. Um, I'm not sure what that's for and neither are the accounting office down at town hall, but they're gonna look into it for us because we also had a $48 encumbrance that rolled over in December, 2022. So I don't know if this is just some old note or something on our account that's been rolling over every year they make note when our you know when the year changes that we have this 48 dollars encumbrance um mm -hmm. 
but the accounting office is going to look into it and get back to me. So I'll follow up. Good. Thank you. Okay. Um, Do you want to go have a potato and more steak? What's next. Uh, social media report. Social media. Um, we have had pretty much consistent follower, viewership, all that sort of stuff. I posted something on the story for the meeting and that is it. Uh, what Britt reminded me um, to do full posts um, for like work days and that. So if we do end up doing a work day in January, although I think it's gonna be covered by snow. Um, so uh, I'll put a full post um, up for that. Okay, so that we should ask Alan that. Um, just gonna flag the things to ask Alan about. Okay, good, thanks. All right. Um, plans for January 13th. Should we do a work day? I'm gonna be in Mexico, so I'm not gonna be there. Um, it seems, yeah, it seems kind of unlikely we'll be able to do much. I mean, I would love to, but honestly, I think December probably would have been the better time seeing that there's now a foot of snow on the ground. Right. So should we cancel? Yeah. I mean, we could still do pruning, but uh, yeah. It's, People don't want to trudge through all the snow and snow banks and yeah. stuff. Okay. So let's cancel that and get that in the newsletter. Um, I'll, do you want to post that on... Um, Insta, Instagram, yeah, good. I'll post it on Facebook if I don't get uh, Shoshana to do it. Okay. It was pretty iffy from the beginning, so yeah. And uh, how about ideas for planting through the rest of the year? I know we have on the agenda so far doing the, you know, putting the trees in the uh, nursery and um, there was one more place we were going to plant. I don't remember. It should be in some of our past minutes. I think we have suggestions of places we wanted to. And then I think we even decided on a few. Yeah. Well, um, Another Alan question. <laughs> okay. Here he is. Hello. Thanks for starting the meeting here. Yeah, we fired you. Get, get my uh, Saturday, second Saturdays back every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> we decided to cancel this uh, Saturday. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be some kind of precipitation, I think, Saturday. Yeah, and with the snow yeah. on the ground and everything. And, yeah. Um, but we were talking about future planting locations, and we couldn't remember any that we talked about except uh, doing the nursery. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, I didn't have much time to prepare. Um, yeah, seems like this always happens. Um, there are there are a number of good locations. I've got a good list um, of uh, streets. Uh, North Prospect. Um, is one desperate need of trees. They're losing all their sugar maple trees. Uh, it's downtown behind CVS, kind of, and comes out over onto Amity Street. Um, okay. so that's a good neighborhood. Um, and uh, we, I had a good list going of locations. So well, let's do that next month. We'll we'll talk about that more. Okay. Anything else on this? So let's back up. Um, Alan, Mindy Dom said she can get earmark money and we need to let her know by the end of the month. And one of the things we can use it for would be to hire people for the tree inventory. Right. Um, so I would need to make her a proposal. I would need to know from you what, you know, what that would entail, how much, okay. and if, we can, if we can do that this year. Uh, yeah, I'd have to crunch some numbers. Um, this week, try to get something to you. Okay. 
see what that would cost. Okay, so Alan will get me some numbers and I'll make a proposal to her based on that. Yeah. Okay. Um, then uh, Stanley Street. Did you get to look at that, Misty Meadows? Oh, I'm very I'm familiar with it. Um, I'm not sure where particularly they want to put the uh, memorial trees. Um, I mean, it's durable. We do setback plantings all the time. Um, are we trying to replace some of the trees that didn't make it from the initial planting? Um, I'm not sure what the what the whole request is. To... So we'll have to wait until um, Anna Carter comes to the meeting. Okay. And then uh, we heard from uh, Pat uh, Svetaka, uh, an Applewood area. Mm -hmm. Is that public or private, those streets? <clears throat> well, the town owns its... I'm still a little unclear and I need to have a site visit with her just to find out. So um, <clears throat> Apple, the you know, Applewood um, company there owns, there's a lot of land owned on both sides of the road by the whole development. It's in the town right away, um, essentially is from just beyond the sidewalk across the street to the row of trees that is, that, are, that is planted on the um, kind of opposite side of the road from Applewood. Okay. Um, so in the email she sent, it sounded like there are trees that are not in the grass belt, but on the back side of the sidewalk. So I would need to check with um, her to find out which trees she's talking about. Okay. But I mean, the only place, the conversation we had last time, and I had included with the in the email exchange was the property manager, was that um, the only place to plant trees is in the setback there. Um, so the grass belt is insufficient and loaded with utilities. And then a lot of the lawn area just beyond the grass, just beyond the sidewalk, um, is also full of utilities. So they, they just put it all over the place. So you got you have gas, you have power, and you have uh, phone and cable and irrigation uh, all on that back side. So it's doable. There's lots of lawn there. That's all going to be set back planting. So. Okay. So we'll wait to hear from you, but that's a possible planting for next year also. Yes. Okay. Good. Um, then um, yeah, we didn't do the site visit yet. Uh, hey, can I jump in, Henry? It's Gina. Of course. Um, what are memorial trees? You all just mentioned memorial trees. Is that when a tree dies and you put in another one? What's no? This is a memorial <laughs> I mean, no. to members of their community who died. Oh, okay. Sorry, I, I, that sounded yeah. like a bit glib, but I didn't know what memorial trees were. We told them we don't do plaques. We used to, but it's just way too complicated with maintenance and the cost of it and everything else. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, step, st um, say something anytime you have something to say. Yeah. All right. Um, so then the last thing we had for Alan is the site visit. Do you want to discuss the site visit now? <clears throat> um, yes. Does the um, committee want to uh, make a recommendation on the removal, proposed removal of those two trees for the tree warden and the planning board for the January 17th tree hearing? Well, we have to come up with a motion. Let's have a discussion. Bennett was there. And uh, you, Ellen and Sarah weren't there, but you can say something if you know the trees. Did you get to look at them at all? I did. I, I do know those trees. Okay. I was there as well, Henry. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay. So you do you have something to say about them? No, I have my opinion made up, um, which is that I would prefer um, if we could 
get rid of the ash tree and continue uh, allowing the sugar maple or the silver maple, excuse me, to um, continue growing in its place and maybe rearrange the parking lot a little. Okay. Bennett, do you have an opinion about that? You're muted. Huh? Sorry. Yeah. Um, so I've, it's a, it feels like a familiar predicament to me um, in that, you know, we've got these two trees, one of which is in, not in great health and is probably has to go anyway. Um, the other tree, you know, it struck me that when Alan said, you know, we asked, what's the health of the tree? Alan said, it's in excellent health and it looks like it's in excellent health. And um, I hate to get rid of that tree. At the same time, uh, you know, I feel, I guess the predicament that I've mentioned is that um, when we, we've, we've asked, one of the questions I think that, that um, Julian asked uh, in our visit was, to Alan was, well, have you, have we investigated um, different options here? And Alan, as I recall, had discussed, you know, are there other options with the, I don't know if it's the construction firm or the architect or both. Um, and as I recall, was told, no, nah, there really isn't a great option here that would preserve that tree. Um, and so based on that, you know, I'm, um, I, I hate it, but I think that that project is one that is, you know, the town has voted on several times. It's an important one, and I don't want to stand in the way of that with the tree. So if I had to vote on it today, I would say we should allow them to remove that tree, which I hate. But um, I, I don't know any other way to you know, barring any information that I don't have, I don't know how we would, it sounds like there isn't really an option. So, um, and that's the thing, that, just as an aside, that's the thing that I don't, you know, like I, I rely on Alan to say, well, I've talked to the architects and they've shared their ideas and, um, and they say we can't do it uh, without removing that tree. And that's where I get stuck which isn't to say that, I mean, and I believe Alan, <laughs> I, just, I don't have the insight to, um, or the knowledge to really push back or to say, well, there is another way. Um, so anyway, that's where I'm stuck. But um, that that's, those are my, the sum of my thoughts on those two trees. Yeah. Um, I share both of those thoughts. It's also being a scenic road. It seems like they should have tried even harder to protect that tree. Um, I don't know how I would vote on this, but we do have to take a vote and, or we don't, I guess we could not vote, but, um, I think we should give Alan some recommendation. Could you give me a little blurb of the project? So I'm familiar with the trees, but the project is a parking expansion. Um, happy to, if you want to, um, is that okay, Henry? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, so the, um, there's two phases to the project. This is phase one, which is going to be closing down the current entrance to Fort River School. And that's gonna become a construction entrance. And um, the kind of the demolition of the existing infrastructure, um, essentially from the, if you drew a straight line from the parking lot past the, it would be the southern wall of the school straight back to the you know, eastern border of the property. So that where the new school is going, that whole area there is going to become, it's going to get graded leveled, all the current infrastructure removed, and they're going to start building the school. So to do that, they have to create a temporary entrance um, where the exit is right now. So they're going to install, widen the road, um, which is why the tree would be removed. Um, to install the entrance. So all the buses and parents, um, non-construction equipment vehicles would be entering and exiting from that new um, expanded uh, exit 
exists in the exit of the school. So um, that's gonna be for two years. Then after the school is built and they demolish the existing school, there's going to be the current entrance to the school um, will become the entrance for the school buses only. And then the new driveway um, will become the entrance and exit for um, you know, parents and other school um, vehicle traffic. Um, at that point, when they go to build the, the permanent road, they actually move it even further over towards the ash tree. So um, they're expanding a road now for temporary entrance. And then when it's all done and the parking lot's realigned, they're going to put in a new entrance exit for parents and non-school bus traffic. I see. And uh, is the future entrance two years from now going to impact existing trees? Are we going to have another hearing for that? There are no trees left in the public way um, along that section of road. So those are the only two trees in the public way. There is the line of trees adjacent to so it'd be just, just to the south of the ash tree heading back towards Fort River, that property line by that house. Um, there are some trees there that um, may have to be pruned or removed um, if they're you know, in danger of falling. Because there's a number of ash trees in that belt there, which that grass um, tree line that uh, probably should be cleaned up and, and, and um, worked on before the driveway is put in. Okay. Know. Alan, when you say widening the road, do you mean Southeast Street or widening the driveway? Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, so it is the driveway, not the road. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for correcting me. Question. And Just so we're clear as a committee, hypothetically, if, say, we vote to that we recommend preserving the silver maple tree and Alan ends up making that decision, would we then be left in a predicament where that would hold up the school project or would that just push the designers to go back to the drawing board and change the way the driveway and parking lot is designed? Because mm -hmm. I don't want to go against the school project for this tree, but if we change the driveway and parking lot, that feels like it'd be a net gain for me. <clears throat> Good question. So this is a joint hearing. So the planning board and the tree warden all uh, you know, vote on whether to allow or um, not the removal of the trees. Um, there's often a lot of discussion with the planning board around, you know, options and things to do, possible change. Um, so, you know, that would be, you know, the decision isn't just mine. It's 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 a it's a joint decision. Um, so it's, you know, could they could the decision result in the designers looking back and saying, gee, can we move this road over? Maybe, I'm not sure. I don't know the whole scope of it. Um, so it's possible. Um, I don't know, but I can't answer. I can't really answer that question. Got it, no problem. In it, But it wouldn't put a pin in the entire school project. I, I don't think so. Okay, no. good, 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 good. Great, thank you. So, um... If one person opposes this tree at the hearing or in writing beforehand, then it goes to the town manager anyway? Correct. Okay. Um, so I have one question that's, is the maple tree in danger only because of the widening of the temporary road or is the permanent road, permanent driveway gonna affect it as well? Um, yes. <laughs> so the, the the temporary road is definitely going to impact it uh, 100%. And the permanent road would also end up in, um, you know, root loss on the, on the tree. So um, it's, I, I think it's going to fall, a good portion of it will fall within the construction project of the new road, permanent driveway, sorry. Um, I, oh, let yeah. me look at the plan, actually. I'm not sure. They don't really show the permanent driveway on the plan. They just show the temporary one. Um, so I'm just speaking from what someone has uh, tried to describe to me as the location of the, the permanent road. 
driveway, excuse me. Yeah. Are there any tree replacements in the public right of way? I don't see any in the plans. Well, how about a proposal, something like, um, I'm not proposing this yet, but thinking. Um, we oppose the removal. No, I won't say that. I, um, the Shade Tree Committee requests that other possible driveway designs you know, be formed that would protect that silver maple tree if possible. I would agree with that. Anyone else? I, I agree with that. I also would say that it's best practices for any new construction to include trees in the public right of way, especially in an area that's a public service like a school and a teaching environment. So whether or not trees get taken down, I think they should be putting street trees in. For a new construction. I, yeah, I would like to add just to clarify um, that you know, the plans that I have in front of me are, you know, they're not really a landscape plan, you know, future landscape plan. It's just a, it's the layout of the school, the existing school, and the proposed um, new school location and the proposed wow. new driveway. So it doesn't um, go into landscape design. The new landscape design feature. So there may be trees there. Um, I haven't seen it yet. Okay, good to know. I still think it's worth saying that now when we have our chance to give feedback. Um, it would also save time because I know in these municipal big building projects, every time there's a back and forth and the, they used to take it back to the drawing board, it can add thousands of dollars and months to your plan um, timeline. So I think just setting the expectation that there should be street trees included, whether or not we're seeing them at this stage is good because then maybe it just saves it back and forth later down down the road. Um, but thanks for, for letting us know, Alan, that's, that's not in the plan set for review. <laughs> okay. Um, the other option we could say is we weren't given enough information about, you know, whether we support the removal of the tree. That's another option we could say. I feel like we should make a recommendation overall. I mean, it's not up to us, it's up to the planning board, but- um, Yeah, definitely. But yeah, and Alan and the town manager, if it goes that way. Um, but I would hesitate to just not put our voice in it at all. Okay. So I'll go back to my first um, proposal. So I'll propose that um, we accept the removal of the ash tree because it has emerald ash borer, but we would like other designs to be considered before the removal of the silver maple tree of the designs for the driveway. Okay. I support that, especially because it's a silver maple and maples in general are struggling in the current climate changes. So removing one that's in excellent condition in the public right of way without looking hard at other options doesn't seem like the way to go so i i agree all right so let's let's amend that then to say um we support the removal of the ash but we'd like other designs for the driveway to be considered before removing a healthy silver maple tree at a time when maples are threatened by climate change and this one is healthy yeah that sounds great okay all in favor i think that's even stronger yeah all in favor Okay, so it's unanimous. That's our recommendation. And it would be great if at least one of us, maybe more, can attend the hearing on the 15th. It's the 15th, right, Alan? 
next Wednesday. Yes. Is it also at 5.30? 5.35, I think it was. Um, 15th would be Monday, is it? I'm pretty sure it's the 17th. 17th um, Wednesday, okay, yeah. Scenic Road, oh, it's at 6, uh, 6.35. It's a Zoom meeting. I sent Henry the link um, with all the information for the Zoom meeting and for the um, all the designs and plans. So the planning department inserted the link where all the documents for the school project is located. So if anybody from the committee wants to dive deeper into the um, maybe proposed tree planting, you know, landscape plans um, and see what's going on, um, you can see it online. Great. Can, you have you said you sent Henry that link. Yeah, I'll yes. forward it to everyone. Great, thank you. I I can try to be on the meeting on the seventeenth. Okay. I I'm pretty sure I can come to that meeting online. Okay. So you guys uh, stick up for our tree. <laughs> Good. All right. Do you need anything else, Ellen? If you just want to um, send that. To um, so it's going to be made towards the to the planning board and the tree warden. Um, okay. Just want to make sure the planning board gets a copy of that as well okay. before the seventeenth. Do you want to write that up and send that, um, Bennett? Or yeah, you're muted though. That's my deal. Um, sure. Um, what I have currently says we propose we accept the removal of the ash tree due, due to pest problems, but would like other designs to be considered to avoid the removal of a healthy silver maple tree at a time when these maple trees are threatened. Is that what's wrong with that? Yeah. That's that right? right to me. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay, great. Thank you. Um, you'll send that to Alan and the planning board. And uh, I think we're done with that until the meeting happens. So Saturday, this is a this is a point of do I send to I send to both Alan and the planning board at the same time? Is that how that goes? Yes. Okay. Great. And then Sarah and and Anna. Um, so Anna, do you want to introduce yourself and? Uh, Sure, <clears throat> sure. Um, my name's Anna Carter. I live at 15 Tamarack Drive in Amherst in the Misty Meadows um, Neighborhood Association neighborhood, which consists of about 32 residents, I believe. That might not be totally correct, but um, we do have annual meetings. We pay taxes. We have that the neighborhood was developed, I think, around 1987. I moved there in 1996. And we uh, have an annual meeting and the taxes that we pay, uh, pay for, we, we pay taxes on the common land. And we also, um, everyone pays an annual fee which covers the taxes and insurance and lawn mowing. Um, um, I forget the year, but um, I organized a tree planting with the with the um, tree committee. I'm sorry, what's the name of your group again? The Amherst, the Amherst Public Shade Tree Committee. Amherst Public Shade. Yeah. Sorry. No problem. And it, it was a wonderful experience. You you brought many trees to plant. On. Yes. Can you can you hear me? Yeah, it looks like Henry's breaking up a little, but we can hear you. Okay. I saw, I thought Henry froze a second yeah, ago. Yeah, go ahead with what you're saying. Okay. Um, yeah. So anyway, we do have elected um, board members and we have a president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer who handle the very small amount of, of work we have to do just to keep the organization going, the association. And um, a few years back, we had 
requested that the shade tree committee help us by bringing trees and planting trees along the border of one of our common land. Now our largest common land, which gets mowed, is across the street from the Kiwanis Park, um, encircled by Stanley Street, which Stanley Street goes from Route 9 and circles over to Southeast Street. So there's a fairly large block of mostly bare land that gets mowed, but on the edges, there's some trees. And some of the trees that the Shade Tree Committee brought um, have died, but some of them are, are live and doing well. They were quite small to start with. And I think it's about three or four years that they a year ago that they were planted. Anyway, it was a wonderful experience because the Shade Tree Committee said, yes, we'll be happy to bring trees, but we'd like your neighborhood to help plant them. And uh, please, after the planting, we, we hope that you have a potluck lunch, which ended up being a, a delightful uh, community building experience. So that was a very good experience. Um, because mainly that that neighborhood, except frequently, you may have heard about the pickleball issue. <laughs> We've that's pulled us together, and the other issue that pulled us together, that neighbor, all my neighbors and I were um, when the town wanted to put the public works behind the um, Misty Meadows neighborhood, and there was huge amount of objection to that, and so far that. That's not happening, we're told. But anyway, it did bond our community together and I'm very happy for anything that would bond the community together. Now, the reason I'm talking to you now is because I agreed to be a representative of the community. We've had two presidents, past presidents who've passed away and the family members and the whole neighborhood would like it very much if the Shade Tree Committee could bring Again, two trees that we will probably make our own plaques of some sort to acknowledge uh, in, in memoriam to these two past presidents who served us very well. And we did promise we'll have a kind of a celebratory memorial service at the planting of these trees, which you would all be invited to. So that's why I'm speaking to you today at that, at that request. And do you have locations? Would it be close to the road or? I'm going to go, I mean, I don't expect this to happen too soon. And I'm going to go back to the, to the group, to the neighborhood to ask for specific locations. But what's been indicated to me so far is again, along the edge of Stanley Street, probably um, coming from Route 9 before the road bends to head towards uh, Southeast Street. And again, we, we can look closely. We will let we will identify two spots before you come. And there, there was a special request. I don't know if we can be particular, but one of the, the wife of one of our, the widow of one of our former presidents um, has wondered if one of the trees could be a dogwood tree. So I don't know if we can be picky about which tree, but anyway. Um, so we will identify it as soon as, if you approve it, as soon as you you let us know, we will come up with some specific locations, but it will be along the border. Because we have it mowed and having trees in the middle would be an obstacle to the mower. And I guess people thought it, they would be more appreciated and, and they would be viewed more if they were along the edge next to the road. That's that's as specific as I can be right now. All right, thank you. Uh, committee members, Alan, comments? Um, I can comment. Um, so, I mean, I, I, you know, we're obviously trying to plant large trees. Um, we want things to be large shade trees, provide shade to our roads. And we'd like to plant trees as close to public way as possible so that the trees shade those roads. Um, so if we if we plant something, we could pick one of the locations that where the trees failed um, 
to grow. Yeah, that would um, probably be fine. Yeah. Um, I mean, I noticed that it would be nice, you know, so if we, you know, if the committee plants them, it would be the responsibility of the association to maintain them and keep them watered um, and mulched. A uh, number of the trees that didn't make it, um, they suffered from uh, some sort of landscaper disease, it's called in the industry. Um, a lot more in string trimmer damage to the trunks. Um, oh, really? So that would be one of the things that we you know, always want to continue to educate the public that uh, lawnmowers and string trimmers kill most of our newly planted trees. Um, so, did, so wait, are you saying because you inspected the trees that you could see damage? Because yes. some of them show like disease of some sort. A lot of that decay is a result of trees being the cambium of the tree being killed and then um we start seeing um fungi growing on the upper branches and things as the um tree dies slowly so okay all right well we'll definitely make a note of that um to be more careful for our lawnmower we hire somebody to come and i don't know how much uh we've spoke to that person to be more careful, but, we, but well, would the Missy Meadow Association be capable of providing water to those trees? You know, two times a week during the summertime, and and um, you know, follow up care for for two two to three years of uh, follow up care. Um, wow, that I can't I can't speak to that. I don't know. There's no mm -hmm. water source nearby that I know of, so we'd be carrying buckets, I suppose, unless you have a tip as to how we could, I mean, any tips for caregiving would be very good. Um, I, I just, I would just, I just want to make a point that if we, if the, the committee slash town, you know, plants trees in the, as memorial trees that you're requesting that um, you have in place a a maintenance plan to keep those trees alive um, in the setback. Okay, uh, I will bring that back to the neighborhood and ask how committed people are to watering, did you say twice a week? During the summertime, if it's not raining, if we're not getting, you know, uh, half an inch of rain a week, um, you're gonna wanna probably water twice a week. Okay, I know that you did bring over a pile of mulch which we did help and put around all the trees we organized and did that. And if you can give any more tips for maintenance, that would be appreciated. Um, and yeah. I find out if we can get commitment to water trees. May I just add also manual weeding around the trees um, and just even like tilling up, not with a rototiller, but like with your hands or a rake, some of that mulch. Um, throughout the summer maybe two three times throughout the summer can help at least delineate it for the lawnmower crews to not strike the tree so if the association was interested in doing that maintenance i think that would be great and also you can just buy like little fences or things like yeah. that to go around the trees that can help prevent them that are like eh, two feet tall um so those would be my two suggestions um, for maintenance, possibly for the association. My other question was, am I mistaken that the association collects dues um, as part of, from their, from the homeowners or whoever? Yes. Okay. Um, so I was just wondering um, for two reasons. A, if we're going to be putting them in the public way, obviously I think that would be fair for the town to cover. But um, if they're going to be set back on the association property, I think it would be, I think we should at least consider having the association pay for, um, or at least assist with the purchase of the trees that we plant there. We provide the labor, the, um, the work from the town to come out and give that expertise from Alan and the truck coming out and all that. So if the association was interested in paying, I think that would be great. We also try to prioritize trees that are within the public way. 
um, but do consider setback plantings. And I'd also like it if we tried as best as possible to commit to when, not commit, but like consider or have some deference to when there is a situation where we do a setback planting, are we providing a tree for someone who could afford that tree? Or are we providing a tree for someone who might otherwise not be able to put a tree there because they can't afford the two, three, four hundred dollars to put a tree there? So I think that's something that we should also consider when we're doing setback plantings um, in this situation. So I would, that's where I sort of stand on this. Um, all right. What I'd like to add to the information is that this neighborhood is partly, it was a joint town of Amherst and Department of Housing and Community Development, the State Department of Housing and Community Development that actually developed uh, Misty Meadows neighborhood and it's a mixed income. There are, I don't, uh, several, I mean, four or five, four, I think, um, affordable housing units in the neighborhood as well. So I just wanted to point that out so you can understand that the town of Amherst is partly, I guess, owns, or at least has, I don't, I don't know the terminology to use, but anyway. Yeah. It was it was developed with the town of Amherst. In fact, all of us who have a rider on our mortgages or on our on our deeds have to pay back a certain percentage um, of discount that we may have gotten. We have to pay it back to the town if we sell the homes. So there is it is not your ordinary. It's not a privately developed. Right, right, right. No, I understand. But they do have like the the association has a bank account and a balance that it could theoretically, if it chose to contribute to this project that would then allow the town to spend that money to plant trees. Elsewhere. Well, I could go back to the treasurer, but um, it's sometimes it gets very close. So it's not like we're. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. I mean, our, our annual fee is, has gone up to $125 annually, but we are responsible for everything on our property, including all, everything. It's not like a normal condo kind of situation where the landscaping is covered or the snow plowing is covered, or if your heat breaks, we, we have to pay for everything about it in our, uh, for our, our particular uh, land and so on. If I can say something. Uh I think since it's only two trees, we could we could afford to do it. I think more important is the maintenance and watering of the trees, um, and then you know the location. So yeah. I think get back to us with the location. I mean, I'm not speaking. I'm speaking for myself, but I think the committee would would approve it. And maybe we can combine it with something along the other side of Stanley Street, you know, by the park, um, and make that one of our Saturday plantings. Thank you, Henry. I, um, I, I am actually afraid that if I go back and say four or five hundred dollars per tree, that the neighborhood would vote not to do it at all. So, um, I, I, I can't, I can't speak for them until I go back. But I, I would, yeah, I, I, that's my, t my take on what would happen if I took that information back. So, I appreciate your comment, Henry, about. Maybe you can afford it. So, um, other discussion of this item. No. All right. So, um, what should we do? Should we just wait to hear back from you about, and for Alan to look at the location? I'm also when when you think it's a good planting time, and and when by what time do you need to know the location? Well, the sooner the better, but um, I don't know which, you know, if, if we do that planting, we could just do it as a, you know, a couple of people from the committee could go and help you plant and Alan would drop off the, the mulch and trees or, um, 
we would do it as part of bigger planting and then it would have to depend on when that's going to be so um also i i like alan's idea to um replace the dead trees with the new trees so i will find out which ones uh the neighborhood wants to have replaced but i'm pretty sure they would go along with that as well because we don't really like the dead trees there would that mean um, the removal of the dead trees, we would get help with that, or? So the um, those trees were all in the setback. Um, so the agreement we had with the association was that you know, the town would help maintain the trees for the first three years. And after that, they're your trees, you're free to do with them as you please. Um, so um, anytime the association wants to take out those dead trees, they can they can take them out. It's not a, um, right. they're your do trees. So I, I don't think we have any landscapers. Do you think, like, the thought of me going out with my shovel and digging up the trees, would that be too hard for me or for any of us? I doubt it. I, there's probably not much root left. They'd probably just fall over if you pulled on them. So. All right, we can give it a try. Okay. And the other thing is, if we don't plant exactly on that same spot, you can leave the roots in. Just cut I think if we just took a, a saw and cut them down. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, so get back to us. We'll meet again next month, and there's still plenty of time before any planting plans are going to happen. So I'm also okay. thinking, just out of curiosity, do we generally write up like a maintenance agreement with these type of things, or do we have any precedent around that, or is it more of just a simple, like, hey, could you please do, blah blah blah? Because I'm not suggesting that this would happen. I think you guys generally do a good job with your maintenance, but um, sometimes we have situations where a volunteer would agree to do something or whatever, um, and then that go gets pushed back to the town public works to do. Well, I, I don't think the town of public works takes any notice of, of how we maintain that spot, to tell you the truth. I, uh, I notice every time I drive by. I oh, oh, I'm not talking about you. I thought you were talking about. I am like, DPW, so. <laughs> uh, all right. So you notice. Yeah. You notice. Yeah. All okay. right. Well, um, you just said you thought we were doing okay maintaining, except for those dead trees. Correct. Okay. Thank you. But Julian, you bring up an idea that maybe the committee should have, um, a, a you know a guide, not a guideline, but just advice on planting and, yeah. and keeping and maintaining trees. I yeah. think that's a great idea because I don't think we talked about, I mean, I, I wasn't that clear on on that we had to water twice a week or anything like that. So we will, I will definitely bring that to the neighborhood as, as criteria, but any instruction would be very helpful. And maybe yeah. somebody will step up and say, oh, I, I'd love to, you know, head up that committee. So I wrote know. up a little flyer that we used as a handout for one of our Arbor Day distributions that had some tree care maintenance mm -hmm. on it. So we could use that as a starting point if we did want to develop some sort of memo or handout for people receiving setback plantings. Um, and since it's come up, I'll just offer another opinion about priority plantings for, you know, giving for people who request trees or setback plantings. Um, I think because we're a town committee serving the entire town is a good way to kind of frame it. And I like your sentiment. Like I, I understand your rationale, Julian, about wanting to prioritize low income communities, but other than on a case by case basis of uh, the committee valuing or even potentially proposing or prioritizing projects in social justice, right. environmental justice neighborhoods. I think we should keep it open and free to anybody in the town. I mean, there's we're not going to go through the process of like requiring people to submit W-2s or income checks or anything like that. So it's an honor system anyway, and we're a town committee that serves the whole town. So I think just letting it, if it's a service we offer, we offer it to everyone and we can prioritize doing plantings and projects in environmental justice neighborhoods. But I, I don't think having any sort of qualification makes sense for a town committee like us. Okay, I think we need to move on. Thank you, Anna, for coming.
Thank um, you thank very you. much. We really thank appreciate you. the um, the tree committee. Thank okay, you. If you want to come back to our next meeting with more information and send me um, or through the 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 shade tree committee web email um, information on the locations, maybe stake them. Alan or I could go look at them, or or Julian. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll do, and I will. Uh, do you have the date for your next meeting next month? It's always the second Tuesday of the month. All right, I will put it on my calendar to attend. Great. Thank you. Is it always at the time five thirty? Yep. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, nice to meet you. Yep. Bye. All right. Uh, shall we move on? Arbor Day plans. I wrote on the agenda. Uh, something big, like maybe we should be thinking of something creative to do this Arbor Day. And since it's January, I figure we have a few months to, to come up with something. So we don't have to discuss it now unless someone has an idea, but I'm going to keep that on the agenda. And I'd really like us to do a little more next month, next year, next, this year. Any comment or should we move on? I just we did talk about last time last meeting we did discuss briefly ideas for speakers um talk about trees and do another um kind of lunch hour speaker event um so and uh i had written down somewhere there was a recommendation of somebody uh yeah i forget uh, let me see if i can find his name um doug ptolemy was recommended do you have contact information for that person? I could probably find it. Okay. So I'll send you contact information of him. Okay. Good. All right. Uh, town tree inventory. So again, if you send me information, I'll try to get earmark money to help that get moving. Okay. Is Anything there anything else on that? What's that? Is, there, is there a formal application process for the earmark money or how exactly is it received? Um, let me see if I can get her email on. Oh, there it is. She says, um, you need to think about submitting a request to me for an amount and in that describe the purpose and share why this is important and, and or why what it needed is meeting. Okay, awesome. Great. That's simpler than I thought. That's a pretty cool program. Okay. So next, UMass interns. Uh, it's not here, so I don't think we can do anything with that. Mary Maple Table, analyzing the library loan. I think Britt was doing that, and Ellen, you were going to do a tag on it. So we'll table that. It's getting, getting to be an old item, but... Uh, Urban Forest Management Plan. No update. No update, okay. Can we get an update soon? <laughs> <laughs> it's a new year, so I hope to uh, dive into it, hopefully this month. Good, okay. Environmental Justice Neighborhood Planting. Sophie has disappeared. We don't, I tried finding a contact for her and I couldn't, we didn't have her last name, so. Uh, Maybe Britt knows how to reach her. I'm not sure. We'll table that. Uh, website update, Bennett, anything on that? Bennett? I presume he's here taking notes. Maybe you're still muted. I'm double muted, <clears throat> sorry. The answer is no. Okay. Um, I think what really needs to happen is the uh, the request to tree page needs to be updated and have the thing we just wrote up about uh, individual tree requests put on it. So rather than change the whole website, maybe you can just do that at some point? Yes. Good. Uh, thank well, yep, thank you. Some movement on that. Could we put something about maintenance in that so people understand they're taking on something as well? I think that's a great idea. Okay, great. I think we have, we don't have maintenance instructions, but I think we do have, I have to pull it up. 
but maybe a link to something that could teach people about it etc that way we're not um like folks know what they're asking for so to speak and what comes along with it and i can help with some of that language i have a document somewhere from that arbor day flyer that i can use yeah. to start with and develop some maintenance points that's awesome if you can work on that and ellen if um you can find something you said you had in your files and send that either to Bennett or the whole group. Um, it's just the tree request policy that we did. Oh, okay. Do you have that, Bennett, or do you need it? I have it. Okay. Thank you. Great. Oh, it just says owners are responsible for future watering and care of any planted trees. Donations to help fund the purchase of new trees are appreciated but not required. Sounds good. So, I, so yeah. actually, the, the Misty Meadows thing would qualify under that. Yeah, yeah, that's great. We, we do have the sentence, the committee prioritizes large shade trees and environmental justice zones whenever feasible. Yeah. Okay, great. perfect. Great. Great. All right. Um, state level initiatives, uh, nothing new to report. Significant tree ordinance. Sarah, anything? Probably not. No. And last is the solo bylaw group. Uh, only update is I sent along the uh, draft bylaw to everyone. Um, you're welcome to read it over. I'd encourage it. Um, it is certainly not as protective of forests as I think some folks in the community would have liked to see. Um, but I know that it certainly is there. It's on the table. It's being considered. And with the new council, I believe it's going to be considered within some, some of the next coming meetings. Um, it's in the it's in the works um, in the council committee. So be getting yourself educated on that, understanding what and where exactly the proposals and issues and zones and that sort of stuff is, um, I think, is really helpful for anyone who's curious. Okay. Good. Anything else? Any other comments? Gina, anything to say? No? Thank you for joining us. I hope uh, it was interesting. And Bennett, if you can get those minutes as soon as possible to me, that'd be great. Um, thank you, everyone. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. It's nice being here. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.